Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, today we will talk about speed of the motion. And I will uh, talk about the difference between speed and velocity. Both words are actually um, used in our common language, but there is a big difference between them in physics. Now, this lecture is part of the uh, course which is called Physics 14 for teens presented on unizor.com. I suggest you to watch this lecture from this website because it not only has the reference to the lecture itself, the video, but also notes and uh, uh, exams and uh, there are other courses on this uh, website, uh, for instance mathematics, math for teens and uh, also US law for teens. And the site is completely free and there are no advertisements. So I do suggest you to watch the lecture from the site. All right, so we'll talk about speed and velocity. Now, what's very important is for this particular lecture and probably for the rest of the course is your certain level of mathematics, of mathematical knowledge is assumed. Now, if you have come to this course after you basically learned maths on a pretty good level, uh, or, for instance, you have completed Math for Teens course on the same website, then you are prepared. Now, but this is the first lecture where your real mathematical knowledge will be used. Um, and uh, I would like actually to warn you that uh, the course itself will pretty much be dependent on your good mathematical background. Now, the lectures which precede this, this one about time, space, general concepts of motion, trajectory. They did not really uh, use any um, mathematics, but this one and probably most of, most of other lectures in this course will be dependent on your mathematical background. Now, in this particular case, I would like to point out that vectors and derivatives are definitely required um, uh, pieces of uh, math knowledge for this lecture and again vectors and derivatives are fundamental for all the classical physics and there are some other things but for now for instance if you are not very comfortable I do suggest you just go to the unisor.com and refresh um, these uh, uh, topics uh, you have to understand what vector is, how to operate with vectors, and you have to know what uh, the derivative is and how to, to get the derivatives, what's the properties of derivatives, etc. The course relies on this knowledge. Okay, now let's talk about speed. Well, everybody knows that speed is distance over time, right? Well, it's kind of true, but it's not really a scientific uh, definition not rigorous enough. Um, what kind of time are we using? Um, is it an hour or is it a second? Um, why, uh, why I'm actually pointing this is, is because when somebody uh, is driving a car, the car is not actually driven with a constant velocity or cons constant speed. Um, the speed is changing, the rate of change um, obviously is different. So um, it's very important to be a little bit more precise whenever we're talking about the definition of the speed. Now, let me point to the definition uh, of average speed first. Now, the average speed, if um, let's consider so far a direction uh, Unit uh, the direction only within x axis. So you have your three dimensional space, but the movement is only within this uh, x axis. The y coordinate and z coordinates are uh, always equal to zero. Now, the definition of the average uh, speed is really very uh, simple you have two moments of time and you define average speed from moment t1 to moment t2 along 
the x-axis as difference between positions divided by difference of time. So this is basically what distance over time means. This is the distance covered. For instance, at point, at, at time point T1, uh, the, uh, the moving object was here. At point T2, it's here. So you have the difference between them. That gives you the distance. And then you divide by time. So that's, that's easy. So we start with the concept of average speed. Now, average speed is defined quite well. Now, now let's talk about what is an average speed for a specific kind of a movement. Now, let me choose a, a, a particular movement. X of uh, t is equal to a times t. It's called a uniform movement, where a is some number, t is time. Now, what happens if in, instead of x of t, I'm, use, I'm using this exactly function? I will have a times t2 minus a times t1 divided by t2 minus t1. a goes uh, outside of the parentheses, and t1, t2 minus t1 um, can be cancelled, so the result will be a. Well, that's interesting, that average speed in this particular type of motion which, by the way, it's called uniform motion along the straight line. So whenever we have a uniform motion along the straight line, average speed on any um, time interval will be exactly the same. So it's independent of time in interval. Whenever, and that's why it's called uniform, obviously, right? Because whenever you are uniformly moving along a straight line, in this particular case along the x-axis, and this is basically the function which describes your, your motion, then your uh, average speed will be exactly the same on this time interval or on this time interval and any time interval will be the same. And that's why it's called uniform. Okay, that's just an example. I mean, if you will take some other function, a, a g square, for instance, obviously you will not have the same independence of uh, interval. On some other intervals, you will have other... Um, uh, average speed. All right, so let's just keep it in mind and let's again think about how can we define um, the speed a little bit more precisely, not the average speed. Uh, I would like to be able to define so-called instantaneous speed, speed at any moment of time, because at this moment of time the speed might be different from that moment of time. So what do we do to define the speed? Well, actually it's very easy. For instance, you have certain moment of time t. Let's call this moment of time is t1. And then another moment of time, which is slightly after that, where delta t is an increment of time. And this will be our t2. And I will make um, the same calculation on this interval of time from t1 uh, to t2. From, from moment t to moment t plus delta t. Now, if my increment delta t is small, then I have a very small time interval where the speed can actually change, right? And the smaller the delta t is, the closer this interval will be to initial point t where we would like to measure our instantaneous speed. So, in this particular case, let me call it this way. So it will be from t to t plus delta t. And it will be x of t plus delta t minus x of t divided by t plus delta t minus t, which is equal to x of delta, sorry t plus delta t minus x of t divided by delta t. Now, we are talking about people with mathematical background who know what limits are, obviously. And in this particular case, obviously, my continuation of my definition is that the instantaneous speed uh, at, at moment t is equal to the limit of that thing. So, s of t 
is equal to limit of that thing as delta t goes to zero. Now, whenever I have a limit as delta, uh, delta t goes to zero, now what is this? Well, this is the definition of the first derivative of function uh, x of t. And the derivative I just marked with this um, prime uh, symbol. And that's the answer what is an instantaneous speed at moment t. An instantaneous speed at moment t by definition is equal to the first derivative of the coordinate function x of t by t, by, by time, uh, at, at this moment t, right? So that's the definition. So the definition of the instantaneous speed is derivative of the coordinate time, uh, coordinate function of time, all right? And that's why I, I said that you really have to know what's the derivative and how it's defined, etc. All right, so we basically have finished with one-dimensional case whenever we are talking about a particular um, object moving along the straight line, which is an x-axis. Now, you remember that in the lecture related to space, I suggested that we not only can view a position as a point, but also as a vector, which originates from the uh, origin of the coordinate towards that point where the object is. And the vector um, considerations are more convenient because then you can uh, talk about displacement from one point to another also as vector. And it is a vector because any displacement obviously has two characteristics. It has a length and it has a direction, right? Which is a vector. So, before going any further into three-dimensional space, let me just talk about the vector character of this. It's also a vector, if you just think about it. Now, it's obviously, the movement is obviously within the same uh, straight line, within the x-axis, but it also has a direction, because if my uh, function is such that incrementing of time increments the distance from, from zero, which means our uh, function is increasing as the time, the distance from zero is increasing as the time increasing, then it's positive and the direction of this movement will be, at that particular moment obviously, would be positive. Now, if my uh, direction is, um, let's say, towards this uh, direction of the x-axis, but that actually means that we are uh, diminishing our, um, uh, our numbers then this will be negative. And, as a result, my uh, derivative will be negative. So, I don't have a lot of directions, but at least I have two, positive and negative directions. So, if my movement is along the straight line, I'm also talking about vector character of the speed, because it can be either towards the positive direction of the x-axis or negative. There are only two directions, so the sign of this actually is characteristic of the direction. Now, now we are ready to go to three-dimensional case. <coughs> In three-dimensional case, we basically have exactly the same situation, just repeated for each axis separately. So we don't have this. We have certain movement in three dimensions. So we have mo uh, point A here at moment uh, T, which has coordinates x of T, y of T, z of T. And then it moves somehow to point B. Point B is the position at moment t plus delta t, right? y of t plus delta t 
and z of t of plus delta t. Now we are interested in instantaneous speed at point uh, at time point t, which means right at the position um, where our object was at point a, right? So how can we do this? Well, we have to make this delta t as small as possible. So my b actually is closer and closer to to point a. Now, how can I measure both the magnitude and direction of the speed at point A. Well, it's exactly the same thing. Let's just measure it one um, coordinate uh, by another. Um, so each coordinate is measured separately and I can do exactly the same thing. I'm using the vectors now. So this is a vector into the A, this is a vector into the B, right? So let's say this is A and this is b. I will take the difference between these vectors and I will try to squeeze my delta t as much as possible. So the difference between these two vectors obviously is also a vector, right? So the vector will be with coordinates x of t plus delta t minus x of t, y of t plus delta t minus y of t, that's the difference between two vectors, between vector A and vector B, right? And Z of T plus delta T minus Z of T. So this is my vector of displacement from point A to point B. Now, as my delta T goes to zero, this vector is obviously changing. Now, how can I characterize uh, the change. We are talking about average speed of change, right? So I have to divide by delta t. That's my that's my average speed from t to t plus delta t. And if I will take the limit of this as delta t goes to zero, I will have a resulting vector, which is the derivative of uh, x, derivative of y, and derivative of z. And this is, I call, the speed at moment t, a vector, right? Exactly the same as in one-dimensional case. So it's a definition of instantaneous speed at moment, uh, uh, at moment t uh, and at point a in this particular case. And now about the words, actually. In physics, this vector is called not a speed but velocity. And that's the real scientific name for it. I didn't use it before, just without, I, I just didn't want to, 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 to go into more complications than necessary. So, let's just forget about the word speed I was using before. It's really called velocity. So, velocity is a vector. So, what is a speed? Well, the speed is the magnitude of this vector. Now, do you remember what the magnitude of the vector is? Well, if the vector is given by its coordinates, like in this particular case, So this is velocity, and I will use now v with the uh, with a bar on the top. Now the speed is absolute value of this velocity vector. Its magnitude, which is actually a square root of some of the squares of the coordinates, right? Square plus y square plus z square. Why? Well, that's a Pythagorean theorem, right? If you have some vector, what its what's its length, what's its magnitude? Well, first we calculate its projection on the x, y. 
and this is y, and this is x, and this is x. So this is square root of x squared plus y squared, right? And then if you have this um, right triangle, and this is z, it will be correspondingly x squared plus y squared plus z squared. That's a simple thing. So this is the speed, and this is the velocity. Velocity is a vector, speed is a scalar. It's the magnitude of this vector. Well, that's it for today. That's all I wanted to talk about. I have introduced the concept of speed and velocity for a moving um, object with x of t, y of t, and z of t uh, coordinates of, this, of the motion of this uh, particular um, uh, object. Now, what's really very important is the following. If you remember when I was talking about these coordinate functions before, I was talking about their continuity. Why? Because we don't want this scientific jumps in no time at all from one point to another, which doesn't happen in the real life, right? Now, in this case, I think that if you want to know the speed and velocity of the object which is moving in our three-dimensional space, we need a little bit more requirement for these functions. We need differentiability, because we have to take the derivative. So differentiability is something which we will probably assume always. We completely or almost completely exclude um, any kind of uh, movement when the speed, for instance, is, is instantaneously changing. Uh, or, or the position first goes very, very slowly, and then boom, it goes very, very, very uh, fast speed forward. So we are avoiding, in our course, we will avoid situations when these functions are not really uh, smooth in terms of differentiability. And that concludes my lecture for today. Thank you very much and good luck.